Design is everywhere. We use, consume, and depend on design moment by moment. Design improves our lives, defines our taste, and determines our surroundings. It can even broadcast who we are and who we aspire to be. Tableware, furniture, textiles, labels, architecture, interiors. What they have in common is that they are all products of design. If you want the latest design news, if you're stylish and want to elevate your taste, if you love beautiful things, then you are in the right place. My name is Daniela. Welcome to Iron Design. Today we are in my adopted hometown, New York City. We will visit a museum exhibition, a dazzling shop, in a newly discovered Art Deco collection. Join me in an exclusive preview of the season's great design events. The South Street Seaport of New York is known as one of the city's busiest tourist attractions, with shops, bars, and restaurants. But the seaport also features a wonderful museum. We are here to see a unique exhibition that explores the luxurious grand experience offered by the Normandy. This show captures the golden age of travel during the glamorous 1930s. The name of the exhibition is Decadence. The ship Normandy was named after the northern French province and was launched in 1935. During its short life, it hosted movie stars, business tycoons, and politicians in an unparalleled opulence. It is considered today as the quintessential icon of French Art Deco. She was like a favored princess in Normandy, and she had it all. Not only was she the largest, heaviest, and fastest, but she was also the most celebrated ocean liner of the Jazz Age. A magnificent floating palace with interiors created by the very best French designers of the time. René Lalique produced the major glasswork, Jean Dupas did the furniture, and the silverware was made by the famous French house of Christophe. These items, if you're lucky enough to find them today, ultra desirable by collectors. In fact, the silver tea set made by Christophe is so elegant and complete that I would like to take this whole set home with me. The Normandy was considered the prime ambassador of French design and taste of the 1930s. These souvenirs illustrate the marvels of a brief flash of history, a shining moment when the Normandy celebrated its heyday at the forefront of the world stage. This film shows the elegant, chic women and stylish men standing on the deck, marveling the skyline of New York City. Some of the celebrity passengers included Bob Hope, Cary Grant with Marlene Dietrich, Salvador Dali, Joseph Kennedy with his son Joseph Kennedy Jr., and Fred Astaire. Yet, it was finished all too soon. It was World War II that brought about her destruction. She was commandeered by the United States and converted into a military vessel. 
the Normandy finally met her in glorious end on the Hudson River where she caught fire. All that was left of her marvelous beauty was merely scrap metal. I keep remembering that while all of this luxury was celebrated, millions of people were living under the Great Depression. How sad it is that just the very few had the means to enjoy this fantasy. Are you looking for attractive objects with modernist taste? Then you'll love the Conran shop. Sir Terence Conran is the most influential British tastemaker of his generation. Besides being monumentally successful as a designer, he was also instrumental in establishing the Design Museum in London. The Conran shop offers design classics and the finest reproductions of furniture and objects by some of the great design legends. Sir Conran himself still personally approves every product available in the store. Therefore, no wonder that the Canon shop has often been referred to as the temple of design. When it comes time to set up your dinner table, the Canon shop has tons of great ideas with fun and unusual items. Oh, what a great idea to use abstract forms like an artist palette testing ground for rich colors, just like a dinner party is a testing ground for rich flavors and personalities. And I should know, I'm famous for my dinner party. These crumpled ceramic cups look exactly like the discarded plastic cups. This little object reminds us that sustainability yields unexpected delights. The Eames Lounge is probably the most written about single piece of furniture in modern times. The lounge and ottomans were designed by Charles and Ray Eames in the 50s. With its iconic piece, the husband and wife team made history. The Eames tried to merge the traditional masculine armchair with the modern technology of molded plywood. And like a Hollywood romance, this married couple dominated American post-war design. The Eames lounge chair is often seen in the TV drama Mad Men, which always feature beautiful objects. The Time Talk English clock uses words instead of numbers to tell time. So if you can't read a traditional clock face, this will save you the embarrassment. Collecting design has become one of the most dynamic areas in the international marketplace. But collecting reproductions of good design has its own personal value. The Conran shop is one of the most wonderful places to acquire well-crafted, iconic objects. And now I'd like to tell you a story about hidden treasure. Rule Man is perhaps the most celebrated furniture designer of the 20th century. In fact, he helped design the interiors of the Normandy. All of his pieces have been exhaustively documented, catalogued, and widely collected for decades. Therefore, experts, collectors, and curators were shocked when two suites were found, completely intact and impeccably preserved. I'm here to speak with James Amatis of the Department of 20th Century Design about how he orchestrated this incredible event. James, this is an unusual event even for you at Sotheby's. So what is so unique about this discovery? This is the first time in my career that I've actually dealt with works by Ruhlman that are descended in the original family. The last time anything like this has happened here in America was over 10 years ago. How do you place Ruhlman in, within the pantheon of 20th century designer? Where is his place? He's the king of his era. He, you know, 
in fact, not only is he the, the kind of standard bearer for 20th century French furniture, and really the, you know, he's the one who inherited the torch from the great ebonists and great cabinet makers of previous centuries in Paris, but also within the context of the 20th century market, um, he has always been the king as well. Was he known in America as well? He was, in the 30s? He was absolutely known in America in the 30s, and it is possible that the American couple, the newlyweds, who commissioned this collection from Ruhlman in 1929, um, there's a single, slender, somewhat minor Ruhlman chair in this collection that we're actually selling together with this remarkable vase console that is not documented in the family archives. And it's quite possible that they bought this piece from a department store and then became enamored with Ruhlman. And thus, when they made their classic uh, trip abroad to Europe, they hooked up with the atelier and began this correspondence and this relationship, which led to them ordering a entire bedroom and an entire dining room worth of furniture in 1929. The first thing about this collection that really jumped out at me is that even though this commission was ordered up in 1929 and completed in 1930, just when the stock market crashed, just when both Ruhlman was struggling as well as America in general was obviously going through its worst financial crisis, they nonetheless, the exquisite craftsmanship of this material uh, really some of the works in this collection are on the same level as the best that he did for any client, whether it was for the Maharaj in India or for his top Paris clients. Um, at the same time, um, some of the pieces also show him making specific adaptations to the needs of his American client. And you have pieces that are very, very lavish for the dining room and pieces that are a little bit more simple and straightforward for the bedroom. When vintage furniture arrives on the market, we're talking about things that people have used for years and years and years, things people have lived with, and therefore they usually show signs of age. And collectors really love it. They're attracted to this imperfection caused by use. And I want to ask you about these pieces of furniture by Rule Man. They've been in storage for decades, and they are in perfect condition. What could this mean to, to a collector? For a collector, this group is, is, is the discovery that no one has ever seen before. In my professional career, I, had, I now realize that I have never seen a work of Ruhlman in its original condition, that every piece of French Art Deco kind of goes through what we call the French polish. Um, when dealers and galleries acquire furniture, uh, they, they, they polish, they wax, they polish, they wax. This work is remarkable, however, not only because it's in its original finish, but also because in 1929, Ruhlman was getting more technologically advanced than he was in, say, 1920. And so he actually created this new varnish uh, that was more of a protective sealant than some of the work that he had a decade before. James, thank you very much, and oh. lots of success to you. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure, and I'm, Sotheby's is happy to host you anytime. Thank you. Appreciating a vintage object is like searching for clues in a mystery. Who lived with this object? How was it made? Where did it come from? Certainly, these pieces of furniture at Sotheby's tell us a fascinating story. Thanks for joining me, Daniela, on Design. Until next time, remember, the more you notice and appreciate design, the more beautiful your world becomes.